This is it. The final roll of the dice for the crews competing in the 2016 Donaldson Cross Country Championship. And with a spectacular but rough 450 route, it was a race punctuated by punctures. Two championships were to be decided at Glen Harvey, and in the end, two champions were crowned. This is not only their story, but also the tale of the final round of this year's championship. Welcome to round seven of the championship. Welcome to the Atlas Copco Gold 450. There's nothing quite like a tight motorsport battle to spice up your weekend. And very few, if any of them, come quite as tight as the race for the Class T Honours in this year's Donaldson Cross Country Championship. In the red corner, we have the young gun, 4x4 Mega World's Jason Fenter, partnered with Vince Van Alleman. And in the blue corner, we have the experienced racer in the form of NWM's Chris Fisser, teamed with Navigator Ward Huxtable. It's Toyota versus Ford, red versus blue, in a battle that would form a good basis for a Michael Bay movie, especially if you include the fire that the NWM team suffered at their headquarters mid-season. After six rounds of the championship, it all came down to this, the final roll of the dice. There were no permutations to work out, no gray areas. Whichever of these two crews finished ahead of the other would be king, simple as that. It was slightly more complicated in the fight for the Special Vehicle Championship. Motorite's Evan Hutchison, partnered with Donnie Stassen, held a slender lead going into the final round. This meant that his teammate, Aussie Dave McShane, with navigator Alvin Kutsia, simply had to win the final round of the season. But at the same time, they needed Hutchison and Stassen to finish in third place or worse, otherwise the big trophy would go to Hutchison. This turned McShane and Kutsia into the underdogs, and with Hutchie bowing out of racing after this event, it was hard not to root for him. Whatever the case may be, and whomever it is that you backed, there can be no doubt that the 2016 Donaldson Cross Country Championship drew to a close with a humdinger of a race. As before, the event was based at the Kluwerf Country Club in the mining town of Glen Harvey, some 40 minutes to the west of Johannesburg. This year, the event was combined with the season closer of the SA Cross Country Motorcycle and Quad Championship, which meant a full DSP and plenty of action for the fans to enjoy. The Cars event consisted of a qualifying race of 100 kilometers, followed by two race loops of 175 Ks, all run in a highly compact format within easy reach of the DSP. By the time round seven rolled around, a number of championships had already been determined. Class FIA had been sewn up by Leroy Poulter and Rob Howie in their Toyota Kazoo Racing SA Hilux with two rounds to spare. Otto Graven and Bobby Bruce managed to close out the competition in Class S with one round in hand, and that on their debut in the sport. Their Toyota Hilux ran without major problems throughout the season. This meant that the only production class still to be decided was the highly competitive Class T. With Fisser and Fenter tied on points, it was always going to be one hell of a fight. We caught up with the two of them before the race. So yeah, we, uh, at this point of time, we, uh, we, we even in Class T. And um, the, the one that, that wins tomorrow wins the championship. So yeah, we must go, that's our aim. So it's going to be difficult. I think it's going to be a more a tyre race, uh, which tyres hold the loss. So I think it's going to be great. The other big fight was for top honours in the special vehicle category, with Hutchison squaring off against McShane. For the Aussie, it was simple. Do or die. Oh, for me, the usual. I'm going to go absolutely flat out from the outset, you know, like the gap's such that you know, I have to win. So um, you know, I'm not here to come second. So I'm going to leave nothing on the table. It's, uh, it's all or nothing, absolutely. For Hutchison, it was a bit more nostalgic than that. After more than a decade of racing, the Motorite team was about to come to an end. And the Atlas Copco 450 would be more than just a shot at the championship for Hutchison. 
know we've had a, we've had a good time. It's been it's been a great time. Um, so uh, feeling quite nostalgic, and there's a lot of emotion in the weekend. But um, as per usual, we, we've got a job to do here this weekend, and that's to win a championship. So classes FIA, S, and P were all done and dusted. John Thompson reigned supreme in class P. But that didn't mean the crews competing in these classes weren't going to go hell for leather at the last race of the season regardless. Because racing drivers simply don't compete to come second and there was one round to go. That and the fact that this event is an opportunity for one of the biggest sponsors in the sport to shine. As Gary Bertholdt's navigator Phil Herselman, who also happens to be Atlas Copco's general manager of construction technique, explains to us. We're very excited because for a start it's the fourth year that we do it here and it's coinciding with the 10th year that Atlas Copco is, uh, is uh, participating in off-road racing. I cannot believe it but it's already that long. Join us after the break for all the action from the production category at the 2016 Atlas Copco Gold 450. This summer, renowned foodie Hilary Biller is on a mission to reinvent the South African braai. It's out with the chops and force and in with the gourmet grill. She's bringing fresh ideas and full-on flavor. From Asian-inspired ribs to Mexican magic on the grill and kebabs with local flair, this is the place to be for all the inspiration you need to make your summer sizzle. Quick question, who's celebrating their 30th birthday by giving you all the gifts? Super quick, of course. Spend 4,000 Rand or more and get a virtual reality headset absolutely free. Super quick, tire experts, closer to you. Welcome back to the Atlas Copco Gold 450. Final round of the 2016 Donaldson Cross Country Championship. Friday, October the 28th, dawned bright and extremely hot at Glen Harvey, where the DSP for the race was based. Even though it wasn't technically weekend yet, the spectators were braving the heat to watch the race as the crews got themselves organized ahead of the qualifying loop. The big question on everyone's lips, would it be Fisser or Fenta? The Ford or the Toyota? Or if you're four years old, the blue car or the red car? But even though there was no doubt that Class T would supply the fireworks, there was another big drawing card for the crowds at this year's race. Toyota Kazoo Racing SA would be fielding their new Dakar baby, the Toyota Hilux Evo. And this time the two-wheel drive machine would be in the hands of Anthony Taylor and navigator Dennis Murphy. Last race for the season and uh, you know we've got nothing to lose so we're not racing this weekend for any championship positions. Uh, Leo has already won it, I'm second, so we are to, to have a bit of fun with the Evo this weekend. So with Taylor piloting the Evo, it was up to stand-in driver Conrad Routenbach to fly the flag for Toyota Gazoo Racing SA in class FIA. The Zimbabwean had competed in two races for the team earlier in the season and was keeping Leroy Poulter's seat warm while he recovered from surgery. This meant a fairly depleted field in class FIA, with Redline Motorsports Terence Marsh and navigator Peter Swanepoel the only other vehicle officially entered in the class. Similarly, Class S for vehicles with solid rear axles and engines up to 4 litres in capacity, also only featuring two cars. Both of them Toyota Hilux, both of them piloted by the Gravens. Newly crowned Class S champion Otto would be taken on brother Ronnie in a head-to-head -head battle. Sibling rivalry on a whole new level. And then, after all the build-up and waiting, it was time to go. At 11.30 in the morning, the qualifying race got underway and all of a sudden the area around Glen Harvey was filled with dust and drama. For Otto Graven, however, it was a qualifying race to forget. His normally reliable Toyota Hilux developed an electrical short early in the loop, costing him the best part of eight minutes. This meant that brother Ronnie stole a march on the field and comfortably qualified on pole for Class S. 
at the other end of the field. Conrad Routenbach and Rob Howie drove their class FIA Toyota Kazoo Racing SA Hilux with impunity, dodging the sharp rocks and recording a clean run, and with it, the fastest time of all. We're just trying to have a good clean run. Um, everyone warned me about the punctures here, so we're just trying to keep it clean and tidy. This meant then that they'd lead the pack off the mark for the main event. But it was the hotly contested Class T that drew not only the most attention, but also the most drama. The two vehicles in the Atlas Copco stable had a torrid time as Henny de Klerk and Navi Adrian Roots lost three minutes due to a faulty GPS in their Treasury One Volkswagen Amarok. Teammates Gary Bertholdt and Philip Herstelman fared somewhat better, though they may have been too cautious over the rough terrain. In the end, they recorded the third fastest time of the qualifying race. Caution was the order of the day, with Redline Motorsports' Luke Buerta and Andre Vermeulen opting for the safe approach too though they still managed to pip the clerk and Roots. Best of the red line crews were Johan Brandt Stoddard and Mike Lawrenson, who went second fastest on the day after a clean run. The Malalan boys, Johan and Werner Horn, recorded a fairly good result, placing their Toyota Hilux in fifth on the grid, leaving just a couple of question marks. NWM Racing and 4x4 Mega World. Four crews, two possible champions. Who did it? Well, in the blue camp, Gareth Woolridge went fourth fastest on the day, though he felt he was being too, dare we say it, cautious over the rough stuff. And in the red camp, Dion Fenter still struggled with his new left-hand drive Toyota Hilux. With that said, his son didn't have any such problems. Jason Fenter and Vince Van Allerman had a simply amazing qualifier, placing their Toyota Hilux not only on pole, but more importantly, also two minutes and 29 seconds ahead of championship rivals Chris Fisser and Ward Huxtable, who also suffered from too much caution during the qualifier. This brought Venter another massive step closer to the title. Oh, we had a great day in the seat. Uh, we kept to our game plan, it was to stay in the road, and it worked 100% for us. Confirmation then of Fenter's victory on the qualifying race, and tellingly, Fisser didn't crack his way into the top five. Was this game set and match? Well, in the words of Murray Walker, this is motor racing where anything can happen. And it usually does. With the starting orders determined, it was time to go racing. And bright and early on Saturday, October the 29th, it was time for the flag to drop. By now it was clear the only real race left was the battle in Class T. Because in Class S, there was simply no way Otto Graven could catch his foot. And in Class FIA, Routenbach was quite literally in a class of his own. As a matter of fact, Ronnie stretched his lead from the qualifying race to win by the best part of 16 minutes. So there really was no contest this time around. And in Class FIA, Conrad Routenbach and Robbie Howie went about their business in a workmanlike manner. The pair scythed their way through the high felt landscape, recording the fastest time of all during the race. The Zimbabwean won his first race on his third attempt, showing real class at the head of the field. But once again, it was the crews in the Class T of the Donaldson Championship that drew the most attention. The rough terrain was certainly a factor, and finding the correct balance between pace and punches was always going to be tricky. For 4x4 Mega World's Dion Fenter and Jaco van Aert, their new Toyota Hilux hasn't brought them much joy just yet. The pair continued to fight the left-hand drive layout of their new steed, and will be looking forward to getting back on the pace come 2017. Ahead of Fenter, Redline Motorsports' Johan van Stodden and Mike Lawrenson were having a tough time. The pair qualified well and were in a hunt for a great result. Unfortunately, they got caught up in the dust of Gary Bertholdt and Philip Herselman, whose Atlas Copco Volkswagen Amarok suffered three punches during the race. Frustrating for van Stodden, but equally so for Bertholdt. Treasury 1's Henny de Klerk and Adrian Roots made their losses during qualifying and despite recording a largely clean run on race day, they were unable to make up for the time lost on the opening loop. Luke Berta and Andre Vermeulen made regular podium appearances this year, but three punches on race day didn't help their cause in Glen Harvey. They suffered two flats during the morning loop and one more in the afternoon, testament to the rough terrain in the hills of the goldfields. Ahead of them, the Malalan Toyota crew of Johan and Werner Horn had a much happier time in the saddle during the race than they had had during qualifying. After losing GPS signal on the opening day, they clawed their way back to finish fourth in Class T, handing them back some dignity 
after a season they'd largely rather forget. And suddenly we reach the sharp end of the field. With Malalan pegging fourth, only the podium places remain. And of course, the small matter of the Class T Championship. Remember, Fenter and Van Alleman had the upper hand after a great qualifier, but Fisser and Huxtable are no pushovers. And somewhere in the middle was Gareth Woolridge and Boyd Dreyer in the second NWM Ford Ranger. So this was the last roll of the dice for the championship contenders. But the gambling gods can be cruel. And Chris Fisser's last roll came up snake eyes when he needed a pair of sixes. At first, the Ford Pilot and Navigator looked like they were going to claw their way to victory but a slow puncher in the second loop put paid to that. To add insult to injury, teammates Woolrich and Treya also overtook them, relegating the veterans to third overall and handing the championship to Fenter and Van Alleman. Actually, that isn't quite fair. The 4x4 Mega World crew earned their victory the hard way. They suffered a puncher on loop one and had to bob and weave their way through the tricky terrain, eventually hanging on for a championship victory of just 64 seconds. What a race, what a season, and at the end of it, one delighted champion. Paid off, so um, we are very glad. Um, it's an amazing feeling, so I'm just, I'm very happy. Whilst the results were still not final at the time of writing, here's how things played out at the Atlas Copco 450. Routenbach and Graven took classes FIA and S respectively, whilst a massive victory for Fenter and Van Alleman gave the pair the overall title, and Toyota a clean sweep for championships in all classes. Woolridge and Dreyer finished in second place with Fisser and Huxtable having to settle for third, despite an impressive drive on the day. Join us after the break for all the highlights from the special vehicle category at the Atlas Copco Gold 450, the final round of the 2016 Donaldson Cross Country Championship. Whether XK, C-Type, D-Type or XJR, these are the vanguards of the racetrack. Always fast, always beautiful, always elegant. Drama and excitement at the Atlas Copco Gold 450, the final round of the 2016 Donaldson Cross Country Motor Racing Championship. And what a race we've had so far. In the production vehicle category, we've just crowned a new Class T champion in the form of Jason Fenter and co-driver Prince Van Alleman. But we still had to answer the other big question. Who will walk away with the special vehicle spoils? Between Evan Hutchison and arch-rival Dave McShane and the answer of who will be crowned king were two days and 450 kilometers of racing. So after qualifying, they went. But it wasn't Hutchison or McShane to get the special vehicle ball rolling. That honor of opening the road belonged to Ntot Bereng and Makara Matakani, but their ace co soon ran into problems. Next up was the battle of husband and wife Lawrence and Karine Boyson, followed by the first of the Class B Zarcos in the hands of Grant Watkins and Paul Marais, and Bernard Kennedy and Tina Spencer. A few minutes later, and the gloves came off as champions Evan Hutchinson and Donnie Stassen set off in their quest to add yet another title to their long list of achievements. Whilst Aussie Dave McShane and Alfie Kutsia had it all to do to prevent the motorite crew from taking the spoils. With all eyes on the duel between Hutchinson and McShane, it was almost easy to forget that a strong field of both Class A and Class P special vehicles were also present in Glen Harvey. And although none of them were championship contenders, they were still there to end the season on a high. So one by one they set off on the very challenging route around the rocky hills that cover the gold fields around the western area and Glen Harvey. Around an hour and a half after the flag dropped, the field of specials started to make their way back to the DSP and the chequered flag following a demanding 
101 kilometres of qualifying. It was the calcimide Hellcat of John Telford and Victor and Shecky who claimed fourth in Class P. But they were nearly nine minutes off the third place crew of Guy Henley and Mark de Chalain in the Century Racing CR2. Class P stalwarts John Thompson and Marisa Matten have already clinched the Class P title two rounds ago, so with nothing more to gain, Thompson qualified his Zarco in second position, around four minutes slower than eventual Class P pole setters Werner Kennedy and Tina Fenter, who keep impressing on every outing. When the dust started to settle after the big Class A special vehicles reached the DSP, it was Keith Macanetti and Tiello Mochabinelli who set the fifth fastest time. The times on the 101 km qualifying loop were extremely close, as only 12 seconds separated Macanetti in fifth and the Chenauf of Stefan Van Pletsen and Jakob Pietersen, who qualified in third. And the difference between Van Pletsen's third position and the 4x4 Mega World Porter of Kutsia Labiskakni, who completed qualifying with the second fastest time, was a mere 20 seconds. Labiskakni's regular co-driver and daughter Sandra missed the event as she was navigating overseas, so son-in-law, Jako Jonk, happily filled the seat next to the big man. But what about the all-important race for championship glory? By now, you must have figured it out. And that is that one of our protagonists went on to win the qualifying race, and the other ran into trouble, finishing down in fourth, more than three minutes off the pace. Luck was not on the side of Dave McShane and Alvin Kutsia this time. The Team Fox Porter crew encountered oncoming traffic early in the qualifying loop, had to evade cattle at the 60 kilometer mark, and dodged a road fire a little later on, only to pick up a puncher. All things considered though, the Aussie was lucky to not lose even more time. And although the Motorite team of champions won the qualifying race by more than two minutes, it was far from plain sailing. Evan Hutchinson and Donnie Stassen succeeded to avoid most of the rocks that covered the route, all but two, which resulted in no less than two flat tyres. But they soldiered on to win what could well be the team's last qualifying race ever. So after qualifying and with a quarter of the overall race distance done and dusted, it was Werner Kennedy that topped the Class P standings ahead of champions John Thompson and the CR2 of Guy Henley occupying the third spot. In the fight between Hutchison and McShane for overall special vehicle honours, it was advantage to Hutchison following a qualifying race victory over Kutsia Labiskakni and Stefan van Pletsen, with rival McShane still missing from the leaderboard at this point. It was a nostalgic moment for the Team Motorite man after what could well have been his last qualifying race. So we didn't expect a great result. I was a little bit disappointed. Uh, it turns out we're still first in class. So much had already happened and this was only qualifying. So this was it. Not only the final day of the Atlas Copco Gold 450 race here in Glen Harvey, but also the final day of the entire 2016 championship. This is the day that would also answer one more question. Will the Motorite team of champions go out with a bang or will the Aussie steal their thunder? But before we got the answer, there was a small matter of more than 300 kilometers of rocky roads around the West Rand to contend with. And if qualifying was anything to go by, crews were in for a rough challenge. So without further ado, let's cut the talk and get down to business. Seeing that this was the final throw of the dice that would determine the title, let's count them down as we make our way to the top. Class P of the special vehicle category gave us great fights throughout the season, but at the Atlas Copco goal, the field was spread thin due to tough conditions. In the end, and despite being stuck on a sandbank for quite some time, John Telford and Victor and Shecky claimed the final step of the podium in Class P. Finishing a good few minutes ahead of them was the Zarco of class champions John Thompson and Marisa Matten, who had their own drama when they fell into a waterhole. So not a victory here, but still a great season for the class P champions. On this occasion, Thompson left the door open and a sniff is all that Werner Kennedy and Tina Spencer needed. The ace co-driver grabbed the opportunity with both hands to claim a comfortable class P victory, his second of the season. Now we move up the ladder to the big Class A special vehicles, 
where big man Kutsia Labaskakni and son-in-law Yako Yonk were battling the conditions in their 4x4 Mega World Porter. Labaskakni qualified in a fine second position the day before, but the Porter had a mind of its own on race day. The crew were hampered with handling problems and an overheating car that eventually dropped them down the order to place fifth overall. Stefan van Pletsen and co-driver Jaco Pietersen started the day in third after a fine qualifying race the day before and spent most of the day fighting it out with the bat of Keith Maganetti and Navi Tiello Mochibaleli. The latter pairing was flying like the proverbial bat out of hell and the popular driver very nearly recorded his second podium finish of the season. But in the end, it was Van Pletsen who crossed the line in third. Not a bad result for the very consistent crew in the older model Chanel. You don't need to be an accountant to figure out that the top two positions remained and two crews have not yet been named. It's the positions that count and the crews that were fighting for the all-important Special Vehicle Championship. Let us remind you of the scenario. Evan Hutchison and Donny Stassen were the ones with a slight points lead going into the race. And Dave McShane and Alvin Kutsia were the ones forced to throw caution to the wind. They had to win and hope for Hutchison to run into trouble. After qualifying the day before, it was advantage to the motorite crew with a three minute lead over the team box border of McShane and Kutsia. But the Aussie who had who knows what for breakfast on race day as he set a time of 1 hour, 50 minutes and 49 seconds on the 151 kilometer first loop of the race. This was nearly 4 minutes faster than the motor right bat over the same loop, handing the provisional lead back to the man from down under. But Hutchison is a fighter and fought back to set the fastest time on the second and last loop of the race. When the times were added up and the results came in, it couldn't have been any closer. McShane and Kutsia won the race by a mere 48 seconds from Hutchison and Stassen. What this meant was two things. The Aussie walked away with the Class A driver's title, the first international driver to do so, but Evan Hutchison had done precisely enough to clinch the overall Special Vehicle Championship. A quick look at the scoreboard confirms that Werner Kennedy came out on top of Class P, ahead of John Thompson and John Telford. In Class A, the Atlas Copco Gold 450 gave Stefan van Pletsen a podium to finish off his season. But it was all about the fight between Dave McShane and Evan Hutchinson. McShane won the battle on the day, but Hutchinson won the overall war, although this result is still under protest and will only become final in the near future. It was quite an emotional moment for the motorite racing team that have done so much for cross-country racing as Evan Hutchison bids the sport farewell, for now. It was a good day. We, um, we ended up winning the race and we won the championship. And um, I suppose it's the way to go out, you know, go out with a bit of a bang and... Um, <sighs> thank you. Thank you to everybody. Thanks, thanks to everybody I've raced with, thanks to all the officials. Thanks to everybody that supported me, that sponsored me, that's suppliers. And supp it's just been um, an incredible, unbelievable experience. And that was it for the 2016 Donaldson Cross Country Motor Racing Championship that gave us thrills and spills all across Southern Africa whilst entertaining young and old. And in 2017, we'll do it all over again. All the action from the Atlas Copco Gold 450 was brought to you by Donaldson in association with Force Fuel, Ford, Toyota and Tyrac.